Betty approached me back a couple of years ago, actually, to speak for the last year, last year's event. And um, being in the construction industry, I travel around a lot. And as it turned out, I was in South Australia, as it, uh, as it turned out, in Port Augusta, where my roster didn't quite work out, so I couldn't make it. And uh, this time I'm in Sydney, uh, and uh, luckily I could, uh, I could come along. And I guess share my experiences in the construction industry and how we deal with issues, cultures, day-to-day -day stuff. So I'm not going to talk about you know, the law, you know, the uh, legislation, things like this. It's just about a day-to-day -day how we deal with issues for a big company. So I work for a company called John Holland, a big construction firm. I'm pretty sure that most of you have heard of them before. Um, been involved in, in many safety issues and dealt with them in a, you know, in a dignified manner. And that's essentially what we all want. So the presentation is called It's Not a Witch Hunt because essentially sometimes when something goes wrong we investigate and then people ask what people say. It's all right mate, it's not a witch hunt. Well, you wonder sometimes, is it or isn't it? I'll tell you, this is a good story. Well, I believe it's a good story because in my experience with the right people, the right subject matters that do these investigations, you get the right outcomes and typically what you all want in the end of it is a learning and to improve the processes and systems. So, what I want to talk about is essentially like the way I see it and ultimately you know, I haven't really had any idea about the presentations given today and I can certainly see a lot of connections, in particular Maxine's presentation which was awesome and you could just see the improvements that are really necessary in your field and I can see the things that we are doing in our field that work very well. And I'd like to just talk about a few of those and giving you a few examples. Culture is one thing. Culture is a very important thing. And we set a culture very, very early in the project. So we work in projects. We have a conception stage, design, engineering, front end engineering. We buy stuff. Eventually people come to site and we start to build. But you want to start on the right note. You want to give the people the confidence that they are supported and that basically everybody goes home safely. And to do that, you've got to set a good culture. To set a good culture, you've got to have good leadership. I've been very lucky. I've been working in the industry for 20 years, 25 years. And I had some amazing leaders, amazing managers that were very passionate about this and set the tone to do that. But we're all humans, and incidents happen. Unfortunately, in the construction industry, people die. So how do we learn from that? You know, we have incidents, serious, some, some serious, some not so serious, and how do we learn from that? So there's processes in our industry that when something does happen, big or small, we deal with it. And we deal with it professionally, with dignity, and there will be an outcome that is shared at a local level and depending on, I guess depending on the, the seriousness of it, even at a company-wide level or even a national level. The consequences of the incidents are shared as well. Some consequences could be, as we talked about today, that they're non-events. So they are non-events. We move on. Some consequences could be more serious. Some could be malicious, some could be by accident. Again, we're humans, accidents happen. How do we deal with it? And what do we learn from that? And how do we apply that? And that's the sort of, those are the sort of talks I'd like to talk about. So, I guess, again, this is my best, my best, like a summary of, the, of, of some of the connections. This is not limited to. Uh, obviously, we all strive to be safe. We all want to have a safe workplace, and to do that, we, get, we have to imply a level of accountability, and that's for everybody. So in, in the construction industry, you need to do what I call white card induction. This is a, a, um, a, a process set by the, by the national regulators. So anybody that does construction work must do a white card induction. And this talks about your, the due diligence that you are responsible for. So everybody that 
turns up on site understands their accountabilities. And that's very important because there's not this situation, oh, well, I didn't know. No, people do know. There is also a requirement to tell people what the rules are through inductions, through toolboxes, through pre -starts. So again, that everybody that's, on, that's working on this particular enterprise, this particular project, this particular facility understands what their responsibilities and accountabilities are. Again, good leadership. Make sure you roll it out, make sure you review, make sure that these, these, these things actually do get implemented. And of course, you're not getting any followers if you don't pick three people with you know, respect and dignity. That's, that comes without saying. By doing that, people follow. By doing that, you move mountains. By doing that, you get the results you need. And I've seen plenty of examples of that. And I'll tell you, it's awesome. It really is. And in the end, we all strive for excellence. We, we all want to deliver the best project or the best product <coughs> or the best service that we have to do. So what creates a good positive culture? So it's all about processes. You've got to have processes. You've got to have standards. You've got to have regulation. We've got to have rules. Construction industry is very good at that. Sometimes people may argue a bit too much because it constrains, I guess, the, the schedules and, 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 and I guess the, the, the need to finish something quickly. But there is also a good reason for it. It is to keep people safe. So everybody plays a part. So each person has a level of accountability. That's really important. Nobody can say, oh, I didn't know, or that was not my responsibility, in particular in a safety space. We, we really push on, for example, if you walk on site and you see something unsafe, you <coughs> ought to say something about it, and you will not get punished for it. We want you to say something about it. Not only that, you say something about it, it's reported, it gets dealt with. Now, sometimes it's something quite small and probably deemed as unnecessary, but we still give that feedback. Sometimes it's something that can be fixed straight away. We'll fix it. Sometimes it may take a bit longer, but we'll, we'll convey to the teams that we are doing something about it. That is really important because people felt they're, hit, they're, getting, hit, they're getting hurt. So the leaders lead. So that means that these rules apply to everybody, including the managers, from the managers down to the cleaners. Everybody is, has, has to, the rules apply to, to, to all of those people. So if anybody in that spectrum does not follow those rules, they will also get disciplined the same way. And that again sends a very strong message. So positive, clear communication to all stakeholders. So that's really important as well. So when something does happen, you convey that message to, to the teams. So there is no hidden information. People understand what's going on. And that people, people feel engaged and involved. And obviously, you know, treat people with respect and dignity. You'll see that as a common, as a common thread across this. Um, something that uh, I guess you guys can use a bit of. <laughs> so this is, I just want to show you this one. And this is something, and this is just a very, very, very strong message. And it's very common in the construction industry. So this is actually a stop, a stop work authorization card that we give to all our staff members. And these are people that are, from managers down to the cleaners, they have authorization to stop a job. Our, our job is to build. That's where our money is made. But we give anybody the authorization to go to someone and they see someone unsafe to stop the job. These two characters that you see on these pictures, one is the construction manager and one is the project manager. These are the big wigs on the, on the project. They, they basically give authority to anybody on the project without consequence to stop a job. Sometimes maybe someone does it that wasn't necessary. It doesn't matter. If we only catch that one time when we could have hurt someone, then that's a win. Because let's face it, on any project or any, I guess, any workplace, you can be as, you know, you can perform as well as you can, and you'd be, you know, you'd be right on track 
to you know to get the to, to get the outcome that you want. When you get when you start to hurt people or when you start to kill people, none of that matters anymore. So that's why in the construction industry we take you know a very very important approach to that. So this says you know, there is nothing more important to us than safety. So the, you are authorized and responsible to stop activity that cannot be undertaken safely. So the responsibility part is really important as well. So what we're saying to our people is, you are authorized, but in a way, if you see something unsafe, you're actually responsible as well to do something about it. So, and our aim is to develop, you know, the, sa the safest safety culture at John Holland. So, this is one example. There's many examples of these at other construction sites. But I just wanted to share that with you because that's just a very powerful message to those that work on the site. But lead by example is a really big one. You know, if a leader doesn't comply, how can you expect everyone else to follow? So what's important is set clear expectations at all levels, set the rules. This is again done by project inductions. Training, you know, I've heard today that you know, there are no standards and, and there's lack of training. Training we are extremely big on. Like there are particular activities that we cannot do without having the appropriate training. Of course, you guys, you know, with your your obviously ready to do your job. But we use machinery. Without the development training for that machinery, we have working at heights, we have confined space access, all that sort of all that sort of stuff. And that's that all requires training and we provide that. Talk to talk, walk to walk, you know, apply to the rules as I said before. Transparency, I think I heard a bit that that's lacking somewhat. Yeah. Again, in my experience, it's been that's that's really been a key a key one. Like the transparency, like something happens, it's shared. We deal with it, we move on. Empowerment. That's 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 extraordinarily important. So give people the authority, the empowerment to do something about a particular issue. We do that also in, for example, in a safety perspective, we have what we call HSR committees. So these are ordinary workers that are put together in a committee with safety professionals and managers, and they can openly speak their minds. So sometimes people are a bit scared to speak up. This is a, another vehicle where people can actually make um, their concerns heard. And those concerns are heard, and those concerns are action, because it's minuted and it's shared. It's transparent. It has to be actioned. Attitude. You know, attitude is everything. If everybody's got a good positive attitude, you know, you, 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 you've just about won the battle. At all levels, this is important. So, yeah. And be accountable. So this applies to everybody, obviously. So I'll just quickly uh, just go through a few things. So this, this reporting of incidents and hazards, I'd just like to to talk about a couple of examples uh, what, what, where this made, it, made a change within John Holland. So in 2009, uh, we had two fatalities in Western Australia, one of which was uh, through a grid mesh incident. So there was a guy that fell through a grid mesh panel that was loose. And after an investigation, we found that the safety systems and the safety processes were not adequate. And they essentially changed all their safety rules to ensure that these sort of incidents would never happen again. And one of those things was that they looked at design. Like how can we how can we prevent safety in design? How can we prevent safety in pre-contracts? How can we design prevent safety before we start a job? People felt at that time that they were, and I'm sure that you guys can probably relate, a prisoner within their own environment. So they had systems, but they couldn't apply them because they were so complicated and they were they weren't flexible enough. So they created the systems to have more flexibility and therefore better safety outcomes. Unfortunately, my time is just about up. <laughs> I do apologize. But yeah, I'd just like to talk about this, the consequences of the incident. When we have an incident, we investigate it with the right subject matter experts. And the intent is not to punish someone. The intent is to learn from it. Now, sometimes it could be it could be through a malicious act. Of course, we deal with it differently. But more often than not, the persons involved are remorseful. They made a mistake. 
That can happen. From those mistakes, we can learn. And we deal with it. We learn from the mistakes. Sometimes we change our processes because the mistakes may happen because we have some gaps, some holes in the processes, and we deal with that. But we are not there to punish the individuals. We're there to learn from it, to move on, and, and share that with the rest of the teams. So that's essentially how we how we um, how we deal with, yeah, with with these with these issues in the construction industry. Um, the change processes are the key. So sometimes it's something small, and we deal with it on site. Some things could it could be it could be a change in legislation. It could be something that that happens, and someone like hang on. We now have two incidents with two different companies by using this particular machine. We need to change stuff, and that happens. This, 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 this is a final one. In, in Queensland, uh, I was working for Santos uh, three or four years ago. They had an incident on a pipe welding machine. There was a, a person that unfortunately uh, got killed by using this machine. As a result of that incident, where at this point they were using these all over eastern Queensland, that work was stopped. But among all those companies, there, was about, there would have been 10 companies that were using probably over 100 of these machines. They all mutually agreed to stop the work, find out what the issues was. And as it turned out, there were some serious issues with this machine, that some safety processes that could have been improved, and that's what happened. Um, so it's extraordinarily sad that it has to take someone's life, but by going through this process, we actually prevent the next person to, to get hurt. So that's just my, my sharing of my, uh, I guess, my my experience and uh, I hope you I hope you got something out of it.